<laughs> you're inevitably going to hear background noise because this is a functioning household and there's people upstairs and they're loud and they don't care about what I'm doing down here. So what is an IR, otherwise known as an impulse response? Let's head over to my favorite place to get quality impulse responses, ownhammer.com. And if you're among the uninitiated, Ownhammer provide premium commercial recording industry ready guitar and bass speaker cabinet impulse responses in wave audio format. I'm not sponsored by them. So according to the folks over at Ownhammer, impulse response capture is a way to measure the linear elements of a system and retains the ability to represent things like frequency, phase response, and reverberation decay. In the application realm of guitar equipment, they are able to duplicate the sound of mic'd up guitar cabinets with extreme accuracy. So basically, an impulse response is the audio footprint of a guitar or bass cabinet. Which leads me to today's topic, impulse responses and how I use them in my Line 6 Helix. Now, several of the topics we discussed today can be applied to the usage of impulses with other software or guitar processors. So we are going to hit on three key points today. Number one, loading and organizing of impulses. Number two, mixing mics or stacking IRs and checking phase. And number three, IR overload. So let's head over to the computer and figure this shit out. All right, number one, loading and organizing. You need to stay organized. If you're anything like me, you're going to dive headfirst into acquiring as many impulses as you can, and it's going to get messy real quick. So you need to stay organized. So as you can see, I have a main folder with all of my IRs divided into other folders. And even my system isn't as organized as it should be. So this is one of my newer. This is the GNR412 by Ownhammer. I have it in its own folder and I have all the associated folders within that. And these are all the different mics. This is one of their massive mic impulse packages. This thing is amazing, but it's a lot of files. So you need to stay organized. So when you download it, just keep it in its folder and put that folder into a master IR folder. That's what I suggest. Stay organized. Here's all the line six files. And basically the line six files are WAV files also. You can lose your way really quickly if you have IRs everywhere. Keep your IRs in one central location. Have a folder structure. Keep it organized. Now, as far as loading them into Helix, it's as simple as dragging and dropping, which is beautiful. It's beautiful. So let's just go to this GNR412. Uh, the summary folder that's basically like the own hammer kind of does like a best of the best of all of it. So we'll just take these and we will drag them right into HX edit. And it loads it up. Simple as that. Now you can see the numbers and the corresponding impulse. And that's how you select it over here. So in this particular tone, I have two impulses, 91, which is a Zilla 4x12. No, a Zilla 2x12. It's 257s in the Fredman position. And then I have a different mic on the same cab at the edge. And we'll go into that a little bit deeper. So number two, mixing mics or stacking IRs and checking for phase. So in this particular tone, high res badunk. Oh, turn the volume up, dude. I stacked two IRs, and I did this for a little while. I've since kind of gone away from that, not for any particular reason, just for simplicity's sake. Let's hear this one on its own. The 212 in the Friedman position, so it's 257s in the Friedman position, 
and let's just hear how that sounds alone. <laughs> So, sounds like 257s. Now, if we listen to the other IR, which is also um, a Zilla 2x12 with vintage 30s, it's got a different mic, the 414. Forgive me, I don't remember exactly which mic that is, but it's on the edge. It's on the edge of the cone. So, you're going to get a lot more low end. Uh, let's hear how that sounds. So we'll turn the first one all the way down, turn the second one back up. So you're getting a lot of that wolf, a lot of the balls. Now this is this is where I was talking about phase, checking for phase. Um, because what's what the hell does that even mean? And I'm probably not the person to explain it to you. But basically, when things are out of phase, noises get canceled out. And it can make things sound thin. Look that up on YouTube in itself, and you're in for a nightmare of explanation. So, this is both of them at zero dB. So basically, just two full volume. First of all, it's too loud, and secondly, there's some weird phasing things happening. So this is my little trick within Helix if you're gonna be stacking IRs. There's a polarity signal path B. So I switch the polarity and I chug until I get it to sound as thin and nasty and shitty as possible. I'm gonna do some chugging on one hand and then I'm gonna turn the volume down on path B, which is the second IR, and I'm going to turn the volume down until, like I said, it gets as shitty and tinny and nasty as possible and thin sounding. And that means it's canceling out the least amount of frequencies so that when I flip the phase, it will then be full and lush and loud and pretty. Pretty metal. So I'll explain by doing. There. It sounds about as shitty as you could possibly get it to sound. Anybody want that helix tone? Sounds like you're playing guitar through a telephone. But now we flip the phase. There you go. Boom. Full sounding. Two mics. You're getting the Beth. Of the blah, 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 blah. You're getting the Beth. Who's Beth? You're getting the best of both worlds. In the attack of those 57s, the shrillness of those 57s, you can get in that low bottom end of that edge miked cone. Now, in most of the most of the cases, you're going to want to turn down. So. Turn this down a couple dB because you got two calves that's loud. Be loud in real life. So there you go. That is stacking impulses and checking for phase. Number three, IR overload. <laughs> this is serious. Now, it might, it might seem like I'm joking, but I'm not. You can have too many IRs, and I have too many IRs. Basically what happens is you just get lost in trying to find the perfect sound instead of playing, instead of writing, instead of recording. What I 
end up doing is using the same five cabs. Even if I'm not 100% on the sound I'm getting at the time, I will stick with one of these five cabs and I just play. And then later, if I feel like I really need to find a different sound, I'll do some tweaking. Or if I'm struggling writing something, then maybe I'll play around with some tones and play around with some IRs. Limit yourself. Have some restraint. Get the IRs of the cabs you really, really want to play through with the mics that you want to hear. And just stick with those. Branch out from there, but don't let it get in the way of you creating, writing, and recording because let me tell you, it will. And you'll get lost in the weeds and you'll never get anything done. So limit your IRs. Don't go out and buy every new IR. Own Hammer and all those other guys, they'll be okay. You'll be fine. Ease yourself into it. Don't get IR overload. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful. I get a lot of questions on what IR I'm using and what IR they should use and what company you should get IRs from and whether or not the stock cabs are any good. Um, these are all just tools to try and get us to write and record better music in our little home studios. So don't get lost in the weeds. I am not affiliated. I do not get paid. I prefer own hammer impulses. I've tried a few different ones. Um, most recently, I've tried the ML Sound Lab stuff, and they sound good. But I just keep going back to the own hammer stuff. It just sounds a little more natural, a little more warm. Whatever preamps they're using and whatever setup they have, I just my ears just keep going back to it. So I try not to spend too much time digging and sifting through folders and files. Like I said, find five that you really love and just use those over and over. And depending on the song, later on, after you get something written and recorded, then go and tweak to your heart's content. But don't let it get in the way of you being musically productive. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. And we'll see you in the next one.